Right, I want to talk to you about a really important theme. Since October the 7th, which was the uh, Israel attack, the massacre that took place at the hands of Hamas, London has been hijacked by sympathisers of Islamist extremism. And it's a sad reality for our historic city. Every week now, you hear chants of jihad and intifada, and they resonate through the streets. If you ask me, it's a grim reminder of the ideologies seeping into our society. John Woodcock, he's now called Lord Walney, and a former Labour MP, he's demanding accountability. And I think he's spot on. He insists that these weekly disruptions, a blatant display of Jew hate, shouldn't be the British taxpayer's burden. And I say I agree. Why should Sharon in Scarborough or any law-abiding Brit foot the bill for this? Today, 1,700 police officers from across the country were deployed to police these processions, a gross misallocation of resources that could be better used tackling real crime. The leaflets distributed celebrating Hamas. They're not just tactless, but a blatant endorsement of terror, a mockery of our values and our laws. These aren't the actions of progressives, that's what they're calling themselves. They're the hallmarks of barbarism. The crowd's eagerness to attack unarmed cargo ships and their disdain for the UK and the USA illustrate a dangerous shift in narrative. Standing there with a thanks to Yemen. Wow. <laughs> Standing against terrorism, once a common virtue, it's now been overshadowed by support for groups like the Houthis, who've in reintroduced slavery in Yemen and systemically violate the rights of women and girls. How progressive. London, now a breeding ground for these hate marches, is being funded by us, the taxpayers elsewhere. And I say it's high time we all said, not in my name, cheers very much. <laughs> Darren, you said Yemen with such gusto there. Can we, have, can we hear it again? Yemen! <laughs> well, it, wasn't, it wasn't quite the same as the first time. Oh, no. You said it, Yemen. Right, OK. Well, speaking of Yemen, I mean, even uh, Benjamin, you are actually pretty good. I retweeted you earlier because you had said... As a first. I forget what it was. Actually. Well, I'll say it. <laughs> yes, it. Uh, well, no, you, you saw... You used that image of the person saying, thank you, Yemen, Yemen. which is utterly shocking because mm. how notable that those people who so riotously attacked Israel for the loss of life in Gaza, now found themselves supporting the Houthi rebels, where far more than 8,000 Muslims have been killed in Yemen in order for them to take over what had been a democratically elected government. And it seems like those people that were taking the moral high ground in their attacks on Israel and the tragic loss of life there's been in that part of the world now don't care about the morality at all or invasion at all or bombing at all. Actually, what they hate is they're anti-Semites and they hate the West. That's a really interesting point, Belinda, because I saw one of the activists who's put together the, the events today was doing an interview with the Chinese state television for Europe. And I thought, hang on a minute, you're all right doing Chinese state television, despite what the Chinese have done to the Uyghur mm. Muslims, but you're campaigning mm. on the behalf of Muslims, you say, and not against, it, well, in favour of what I view as vehement Jew hate. Yeah. And that's what it is, isn't it? This but is ultimately absolutely. what this boils down to. Well, you don't see protests against all the horrific deaths in Syria, um, the, the discrimination um, of Muslims in China. You don't see any of it. The, you, my God, the, the Islamist terror has been a curse on this world, from the Christians being slaughtered in Nigeria from, by Boko Haram to the Al-Shabaab to Al-Qaeda. I mean, Islamist terror has now got its useful idiots on the streets of this country. And I'm sick to death of seeing these protests. I don't think they should get a money from the taxpayer. I'm actually sick to death of seeing the Palestinian flag, not because yeah. I don't have huge compassion for all those innocent uh, who are being harmed, but because it is so strong strongly associated with Islamist terror and those who apologise for Islamist terror and excuse Islamist terror. And you see a lot of that on the marches and anti-Semitism. It, it needs to be out of our country, out of our streets. Bring the English flag back for once. Uh, well, I agree. Well. Anna, you, on your show since October the 7th, have always highlighted mm. the fact that actually people, Jews in Britain, don't feel safe, and especially in London. Yeah. Do you think London's lost? Uh, well, I think it is truly lost. I don't know what has happened to people. I'm sick to my back teeth. Sometimes when I'm listening to some radio shows or whatever, uh, none are here on Cheapy News, I might add, and you're hearing people call up and they're in support of the people of Gaza, 
In the end, though, you start listening and gradually they get to the crux of it where they're almost excusing October the 7th as though it didn't happen. They've forgotten all about it and they're already now, you know, saying, oh, we don't want anyone to die and all this. But really, ultimately, behind it is some sort of anti-Semitism. Yes. And I, I, I'm actually, I've never seen this before. I have, as a, as a black woman, not faced as much racism as I've seen anti-Semitism in this country. And I'm completely shocked by it. I had no idea that this is what, what it was all about. And now when I see people, you know, you have uh, queers for Palestine. It's like, <laughs> hold on a minute. Have you, seen, have you seen what they have done to some yeah. gay people? Come on. You have people who don't understand what they're saying when they're chanting from the river to the sea. They don't know what it means. Mm. They're just getting onto the bandwagon of something. And I think if you look at it, it's actually quite ugly. Mm. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the people that go onto the streets of London and support Hamas and even today uh, trying to big up the Houthi rebels, they might be British on paper, but they're not displaying British values and British uh, pride and, uh, and idealisms. One thing I will say, though, of course, Israel has the right to defend itself. I've said that since the start. Mm. However, there is growing pressure now and even a growing consciousness among world leaders. You had Joe Biden a couple of weeks back, Ben Wallace, David Cameron, all saying now that the... the consciousness of the, these world leaders, these the, people who've been behind so many walls themselves. Mm. Joe right. Biden, the warmonger. I mean... Well, let, 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 let me finish. I was going on to the, the point that, according to Hamas, and actually the UN uh, seems to agree with a, a rough kind of figure, that some 8,000 8, children have now died in Palestine. And I just don't know how... How long Israel can but those continue. Are uh, any death of a child is obviously appalling in war. Yeah. Those are figures from Hamas. You hear this <laughs> phrase, uh, yeah, you know, whether it's one or eight thousand, it doesn't matter. The, the, the guards and health, health ministry. The guards and health ministry. <laughs> the guards and health ministry is the PR arm yes. of Hamas. It is a totally made up. As thing. I said, the UN has has uh, pretty much agreed with it. They said a thousand. Oh, well, of course 2, they. Have, of course they have, because you currently have the UN hosting South Africa's farcical mm. genocidal claim. Benjamin, in which, a, sorry, a just to say, South Africa, a country that had no problem and abstained. Let's not forget. on Russia invi in, in, invading mm. Ukraine and murdering U innocent Ukrainian children and men and women. They had no problem with that. There were one of a handful of countries to and abstain. And you have South African apparently... politicians standing up and saying, it's, we kill the white people, kill the white yeah. farmers. Yeah. And yeah. now they're turning around and accusing but Israel. The only thing I would, I would disagree, and I would disagree with Nana, Briefly. is this idea that London is lost is not fair, because I think the vast majority of people in London, as in Britain, do not take these views, even yeah, if they are loud. Yeah, but can't go out on the weekend. Stop. Yeah, the protest I don't think protests should, should stop pay for them. because that's pay not yeah. themselves. Okay. Yeah. Them themselves. Carry on. Every week. Every week. Works. Right, we're well, going to move on. Uh, I, I, I would, I, on the final point, I'm, gonna, I'm presenting this show, so I'm going to get the final point <laughs> in. Uh, I would say London is lost. It doesn't feel like an English city, and I've said it on this show before.